Welcome back to Project 63. We're now in the new workshop, as you'll see, and we're now going to move on to the next stage of the car, which is removing the engine. Okay, as this is the original 850 engine, and we don't keep a lot of spare parts for the 850 engine, and not many people are actually tuning them or rebuilding them, we've decided to go 1275. Reason being, we stock all the modified components for the 1275 engine, i.e. bigger carburetors, distributors, flywheel assemblies, damper assemblies. So we've gone that way. You'll notice this is an original 850 engine with the original, let's pop the plug off, uh, 8AM engine number. So denotes the 850 engine. It's got the original dynamo there, the original distributor with the vacuum advance on, connecting it up to the carburetor. All the original parts there, including the single inch and a quarter carburetor with the standard air filter. So before we take the engine out, we are actually going to disconnect and remove some of the actual ancillaries. Firstly, we're going to disconnect the electrics. We're then going to remove dynamo, distributor, starter motor, coil, manifolds, carburetor, they will all come off to make life easy to get the engine out. You don't have to take these off, you can lift it out as a unit, but just for ease, we're going to show you it coming out with these already disconnected. Right, we've taken everything off the engine now, dynamos off, starter motor, distributor, exhaust manifold, carburetor, and everything. So all off, we took the gear stick out. We have actually loosened the bolts around the wok on the clutch side because with this being a mark one it has got the cowling just here which does restrict the amount of movement you've got so we might take the wok off just to get it out nice and easily okay Stephen, with you okay up you go keep going go on. keep going keep going keep going go Pass that. go on. go on. go Two or three more, keep going, keep going, keep going. We're out. Okay, so there we go. Engine's out now. As you'll see, it's got the really old Magic One type remote on it, which we have refitted one of these diff housings on the new engine. That came apart quite easily, didn't it? It did, came out of there nice the, and easy. I was thinking it was gonna be a bit tight on that inner wing, but we took the dynamo control box off. Yes, took the regulator off to make life easier and it literally came out very easily if you do find it's a bit tight once you lift it up in the air if you take these bolts out and take this off it then gives you another oh two three inches clearance yeah, yeah it's quite handy if you've got a later car that's got a servo on there a, um, for the brakes yeah. where it comes right out here and you don't want to crush anything then that's quite a good tip mm -hmm. and when you do on that subject when you do put this back in make sure you fit the shorter bolts uh, on here because you'll, you'll never get them in and out past the subframe. From experience of doing that, you really struggle if you don't fit a short, nice little short bolt on these bottom ones. Yeah. Some people sell Allen cap screws to go around here. Very, very difficult to get out if you're trying to do a clutch in situ. Yeah, so nice, always, but... always put the, the hexagon heads in. So we've done that on the race car before in about 45 minutes. So that was engine out, replacement engine in, back on the grid. With three of us knowing every oh, what to do. Part. And the key to that is probably having basic fixings, so not cap head screws, yeah. not metric, everything to have. Original. Yeah. yeah. Okay, there you go, engine's out. So we'll probably give this a bit of a clean up, maybe put it in the showroom now we've got a nice place to store it, put some of the ancillaries on there. And if we ever want to put the 850 back in, it did run quite well. I think it's quite low mileage, so we can just oil change, pop it back in. So next up, we're going to drop the subframe out and give this a real good clean up. You can see we've got some flaky paint on here for some brake fluid must have come out at some point. It's not too bad looking. I can't see any rust or anything major. So once we drop that out, we'll clean everything up, take all the old wiring loom out, which is looking a bit worse for wear. We've got a brand new one to go in. Okay, so you now see we've got all the wiring loom out. We've now taken the two subframe mountings out of this side, this side, one out of each side at the front, and the two from underneath the floor. Then we'll remove the dampers, followed by the track rod ends, 
you really need a ball joint splitter to split these. Now with the help of Aiden, we're going to lower the subframe out through the bottom of the car. So Aiden, if you just support it that side as I lower the trolley jack, away we go. So out it comes. Don't worry about, that's it. You've got it. Just the job. There we go. So we now have a subframe out of Project 63. Quite grotty in here. So what we're going to do is tidy all this up, repaint it. If you look under the floor, you'll notice that all the floor has been repainted and waxed. So from here backwards has all been completed. So all we've got to do now is just refurb inside here, new master cylinders. We'll put a new steering rack on and then everything can go back in. We've already done a video on the subframe on a previous episode, so that's already covered. But what we'd like to show you just here is something that's going to be coming up soon on another episode, twin inch and a half H4s with our run pipes on, distributor, all been dynoed, roll rockers, but we'll give you the full spec of this at a later date. So there's a little preview. Thanks for watching and we'll bring you more soon.